where you put your deposits, like you put your government revenues in this bank, and then you can generate credit from those revenues. You're not spending the revenues, they're still there, they're still there for your state budget, but you generate credit, which you could lend $200,000 to this community, which then would pay back, like probably within a year, you would pay back that $200,000 in the money you would save from the energy generated from this still. And that's just one solution I happen to know a lot about because I've read the book, but I'm sure there are other solutions like that. But what you need first is the funding to create the infrastructure to create these alternatives. And there are many alternatives out there. Keep in, mind, keep in mind that what we do pay for gasoline in this country is a lot less than what people pay in other countries. It's about double in Europe. I think we're at a very, we're at a tipping point in terms of the public debate on climate change. It is virtually, other than just a few holdouts, that people deny the climate change. We're very close to actually moving forward and being able to tax carbon in a meaningful way to be trying to change how we do actually get around, fundamentally change, how we uh, uh, generate our electricity, heat our homes. I believe that in our lifetimes we're going to see dramatic change if we do not. That tipping point in terms of climate change is, is it's, it's really going to be gone. And, and, and Greens have been at the forefront of this movement to recognize that we need to address this crisis in order for the planet to continue, for, for human race to continue. Greens have been, and we need to continue to lead that, to, to, to really say, no, it is not appropriate that we spend more money trying to develop more gas fields so that we could, yes, they only, it, it's only half as much as carbon uh, in terms of its destructive ability on the environment, but we need to move faster in changing over to this green economy. And I believe that, that our, the Green Party really can be a strong, vocal leader in this area. Democrats are really picking it up from us. They, they, <laughs> it's amazing how much stuff is coming out from the Democratic Party. So um, um, next. next. Yeah. So first of all, um, I would just like to support what you said, Luis, about getting there and being part of the demonstrations. And one of the things I really admired about Jill Stein was getting arrested when just going for it. That, and I want to tie that to Venezuela. Um, the thing about Hugo Chavez, you know, is that he got arrested first. He was in prison in the early 1990s. And then it was only after he got out of jail that he, he won the election, the first time he was put in prison. So we, you know, it takes a certain kind, you know, you talked about doing these stunts. The stunt I would love to see, and that I want to, and, and Frankie has been part of a lot, as well as I'm sure many of us here, is to be on demonstrations and to get arrested and to do civil disobedience to put ourselves on the line. And as you said, Luis, you know, the fact that you were in Salinas brought you, but I mean, you don't go there in order to get the publicity. You go there because it's the right thing to do. And that's the way that things are going to change when, when we go there. And I have to say one thing. California is not the best place in the world. It has more people in solitary confinement than any country on earth. More people in solitary confinement than any country on earth. There, we need to look at the ones that are invisible to everybody. Yes. your issue, um, I was, uh, there was a photo of me in the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, they didn't mention my name because it was a democratic uh, choreographed event uh, where we stood, we sat in the stairwell into the, uh, to the family that was being convicted of the Ellis Island, one, one of the many, many families. 
Uh, so there were about 30 of us willing to be arrested. Uh, the cop, I'm, I'm sitting there waiting to be arrested. Um, the cops come and talk to our organizer, the Democratic organizer, uh, Democratic Party organizer, yeah. and, and says, uh, we're not going to arrest anyone today. You know, we respect this family. So we didn't get arrested that day. Right. Um, <clears throat> then when I went to the Sacramento Press Club, uh, when they were excluding me from the second debate, I was in the first and third debates, um, they had no legal reason to arrest me because I joined the Sacramento Press Club and I bought a ticket. <laughs> so, so they literally could not arrest me unless I hit somebody. Um, so I walked past three. I walked past three police officers at the front door and just waved to them. Um, so I was wet. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm yeah, willing, right. but there's as long as you're prepared, there's no reason to be arrested. Um, you just have to be prepared. Well, so sometimes people don't do the advanced work. Well, Sherry was talking about Chevron. We're going to need to yeah. be doing a, a whole again. lot of sitting, a whole lot yeah. of arrests. Yeah. To, yeah. I mean, some of us have already yeah. gone up to there, and we just need to be doing a whole lot of stuff that. there. Stop buying their products. Well, I, when a company pisses me off, I stop buying the product. I, of course I don't buy Chevron, so and probably nobody in this so, room does. So here's the structural solution but that's, to that. We need worker housing in California. I've been here three years begging. I need residential designer license. That's what I would like to do, okay? I've got 25 years of my life invested in architecture. I can't practice architecture in California. They won't let us, okay? Communities don't want anything built. They love the open space, they like their creeks, they like the trees, the bushes, they don't want to block their view to the, to the sky dome. They, you know, there's a million reasons. Somebody got bribed, there's mafia in this neighborhood. I, I you cannot so. literally build a house. She needs a house. She needs a house, buy her job. Easy peasy, right? California won't let you do that right now. It's a toxic, polluted, corrupt environment. So, actually, we got we one, a lot of very expensive houses. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, one thing in Nevada we've done, and what, I proposed, I, I just think what I proposed in 2010 is a chronic, underutilized vacant property when people desperately need housing should automatically trigger an overlay zone. And that overlay zone allows for work. Boom. You, every empty, chronic property would be work. And then you get the artists in there, the teachers, the academics, the musicians. And right now we call that squatting. But you can, you can formalize squatting by an overlay zone. It's a zoning diagram. And it says, you got a chronic underperforming property, boom, it's work lit. David, I think we're getting a little too specific. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to give her an actual solution. Okay, reality is we're all built for houses, so you can't. Please, next. Well, yeah, well, you know, I've been here three years. Yeah, next to the next to the Okay, yeah, my name is Lee McCusick. I'm from San Mateo. First of all, I don't think your email systems are working very well yet. I haven't received a single email from anybody here. And But I'm going to tell you, I've I've been, I've been barraged with somebody called Allison from Kentucky. Her grandmother is writing the emails, and I've contributed 30 bucks to her, and she's apparently going to beat Mitch McConnell in an election. And this is, uh, I, I could hold my head and say, why am I giving money to the lady in Kentucky? But anyhow, it's happening. And I want to urge you to save your emails, document who they are and what their interests are, and the Green Party does need to put together a communication machine that you can use. I was in a campaign, I was campaigning for fire board in, uh, in the coast side, and I got an email information from uh, Sanda, and it was basically nothing happened when I used it. It was a real disappointment, nobody knew, they knew who, who it was that was writing them, uh, and all this stuff, but, so I said there's a lot to be done, but. The press, the paper press is falling apart. It costs three thousand dollars to say boo to your my constituents, and I didn't have three thousand dollars. And I urge you to email, maybe look at it as a tool for reaching Green Party people. But finally, uh, in a historical perspective, you're in a position to write planks for the Green Party 
that will be stolen by the Democrats and Republicans for the next 20 years. So do that. Take your take your, your unique experience and write plans. Just like the, it was the Progressive Party in 1890. They wrote a platform, and that was the basis of progressive America. And the Republicans and Democrats stole those planks for the next 20 years. And that's how we got the modern America of the 1920s. And that's what I urge you to do is write a few planks yeah. from your expertise. Very specific response to your concern, sir. I also was a candidate in 2012 in this congressional district, and unfortunately I finished third behind the Republican. He got a little more than 16,000 votes, and that's why I figure I can finish second with 20,000 this time around. It's very doable. But he raised in his campaign more than a half a million dollars. And where did that come from? It came from a national infrastructure. He hired a professional fundraiser. So I looked at his FEC three forms, and there were virtually no individual donors. That you only have to list donors, anybody who's given more than $200 to your campaign. So he got a lot of very small donations from people, had to have been all over the country, because all of that was just unitemized. And he paid probably 40 to 50% of the entire amount that he raised to the fundraiser. Now, we could do this too if we had a national operation to actually hook Greens or progressives all across the country to say, here strategically is a campaign that we really should focus on and that would benefit from having a couple hundred thousand dollars to actually run the campaign. Oh my God, what could I do with that? You know, it might even get elected. And it's, but they have that infrastructure, they have a fundraiser who could do, I'd gladly pay 40% out of every dollar raised if I knew that I had 250 grand to work with in a campaign. Wouldn't that be lovely? So we don't have that infrastructure set up. I, I, in, the, in the Green Party, unfortunately, people think money is a very dirty word and, and people are not in a culture of actually giving even a small amount of money. There are a few of us who really do. We understand it. If you're gonna run a political party, it takes money to do stuff. Well, okay, first of all, I said that I got on this Allison for Kentucky mailing list by way of Elizabeth Warren, who I was right. also supporting without any previous help, because she's a real outstanding person in my opinion. And but let's make this quick. Okay, so I say thank you, email and thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to address that. Um, I have a vendor relationship with a company called Nation Builder because uh, because there's two aspects to your question. There's the party structure, but then there's individual campaign structures because we have to set up a business for the campaign. Each of us had to do that. They make us do a business. So my business structure set up. It's the statewide party that's dysfunctional. They, there's a disconnect at the statewide party. There's a few people doing all of the work and they're overtaxed and worked out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they need dozens more people helping. So, so that's why the state party is less than it could be. Um, but individually, these campaigns, I have Nation Builder, I have 10,000 people in my nation. I built that from scratch with this campaign. Um, I can blast them every day with email. Um, I've subdivided that into a media list of 200 media people. So, so you know, you've got you've got tools. Um, yeah, we Nation Builder. Well, no, yeah, he's talking about email. I saw Nation Builder when I was campaigning, but I couldn't. Well, I'll be very brief. Um, I hear your concerns. I'm from Solano County Green Party. We also have a similar issue. Um, you know, it's not a st it's not statewide. It's very small, but still, it's there. And when we go, when I go personally to the uh, General Assembly and we go to review our campaigns, I will definitely bring that up as a concern. I also feel very similar. Cool. Mm -hmm. So Juliana is next. We have about 10 minutes and then we're going to do some wrap-up statements from each of the candidates. Okay, we have uh, four, four people, including Juliana. <laughs> so can you make it a brief, concise question? Yeah, I'm trying to make it a question. Um, statements. Is there anything else that you want to make statements? Um, 
um, can I hear uh, more? Of, or can you talk about more about the issues and the platform that you're running on, rather than all the little details and the things that you're complaining about? That's one thing, one question, and the other question is. Um, why was this on Memorial Day uh, <laughs> weekend, the third day, and where are all the young people? I know my own daughter, who comes to every one of Luis Rodriguez's events and is his biggest fan, she is not here because she's at a barbecue that obviously must be going on. So, Michael and I are on social media. We attract a very diverse crowd, lots of young people. I don't see any of them here. I don't see any of them most of them. So what's your outreach attempt efforts in terms of reaching? I know Luis is reaching young people, but you guys want to respond? Well, I was invited to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? You know, just, just a two-part quick comment, not so much an answer, but, you know, it... It's one thing for us individually to reach out to people, but honestly, that support base also needs to be a bit larger. And, you know, I'm a student, I'm on campus, and I can reach, you know, a certain amount of students, and, and that's fine. But, you know, personally, I would just like to see a lot more community effort for this. I mean, you have a lot of, this goes into the email issue as well, you have a lot of little issues, and they all could just be tied together if we had more people working together on those things and a better communication system. And I know that's not an answer, it's just an observation, but... That's just my second platforms. question. What about my first question? Yeah, platforms. I mean, somebody else should go first. My platform is Day Bank, and I already gave that pitch. <laughs> if you go to my brochure, you'll see six planks, as you know. And I, they're very serious, they're very big. They totally are irreconcilable with capitalism to resolve them. But that's ah. what we have to do. The second thing that I think is very important is that I, I, I'm, I love going to meetings, but obviously I have a lot of other meetings to go to. Tomorrow I will be at a big giant rally in front of City Hall in Los Angeles. Young, your Young Just, Youth Justice Coalition is asking the City of LA to give 1% of a billion dollar budget for the LAPD. Take 1%, give it to them. 1% of a billion dollars is a lot of money. And I want to go there to support that in more. In other words, you connect with what people are doing. These young people are fighting for this, and that's what's going to help me. Again, talk to you all is great, but then we got to do more. we got to get out there and be right where people are at, where all the hundreds of the world are at, you know, and not just, uh, you know what I'm saying, just be where the people are. So, Greg, you're next. Yeah, um, my question has to do with connecting uh, social movements with alternative political parties like our own. Uh, for example, the uh, eight-hour day and before that, the ten-hour day um, came about because of social movements uh, like labor unions working on it, as well as uh, alternative political parties like the Socialist Party advocating for um, a lower work, lower <coughs> working hour day. And uh, the end of slavery in this country came about because of both the abolitionist movement as well as alternative political parties like the Liberty Party and then the Free Soil Party, and then as a third party, the Republican Party, which replaced the Whigs within two years. So uh, for anyone, uh, what do you see as uh, opportunities for us to, as an alternative political party, work with social movements to bring about the changes that we want? So obviously I'm, I'm totally for that, and I do think that this has to be a movement. What we're talking about got to be beyond the campaign, but it's got to be a continuing campaign. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to continue campaign if I don't get to be the second vote here. Mm -hmm. But these issues are still going to be issues in the state of California. We're going to keep campaigning. And then with another election, hopefully we set a foundation for somebody to run that has already made connections with people. The Green Party has to keep say that, yeah, I think it's very important now for the Green Party to be part of what's happening. There's a lot of stuff happening in the state of California, a lot of stuff that's not being put in the media. You go to these communities, you find out people tell you, connect, 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 and keep building, <coughs> building, building. If whatever happens in this election, which again, I think there's still hope for this election, for every one of us, but even whatever happens, we keep working, we keep campaigning, we keep organizing. 
Uh, one of the things we're going to talk <coughs> for is a gathering of some of these leaders, especially young people, uh, somewhere in the state of California after this election to keep thinking about how we're going to train a whole new core of revolutionary thinking minded activists in the state of California. So we don't stop, we keep moving. <coughs> Answer the second part of her question, and then I'll go to that one. Um, my platform's online for anyone who hasn't seen it already. My uh, website's vote.davidcurtis.org, and there's a tab called Platform, and it's like 30 things, so I can't say all of them. But I will say that the primary role of the Secretary of State is they're the head of the elections. Um, right now, the elections have been co-opted just like the media has been co-opted. So I would un-co-opt the election. I would, I would neutral, I would make structural changes to neutralize the process so that each candidate is presented equally. We don't have a statutory requirement that debates include all the candidates. There's no statutory requirement. So I would make a rule at the Secretary of State's office that all public debates have to invite all the candidates. Um, you know, basic stuff. Okay. Um, Any female responses? <laughs> as, as to planes, uh, there, all of the above, you know, all of the, the, the four pillars of the Green Party are nonviolence, social justice, ecological wisdom, and grassroots democracy. And we all are, as, in terms of social movement, there's a wealth of social movement activism here. I mean, just uh, for myself, I, I have been, have been um, active with Occupy Education and and really looking at the fact that they're creating a statewide student union so that from community colleges and even high schools and CSUs and UCs that they can have a, a, a coordinated response and things like that. That's good place. If the money is off, it's all off. And so what this Rosie the Riveter team is working on is getting the money right. Because what they will do is talk all day long, and they'll pick up our planks and bury them in the yard. Do you know? But because if the budget is messed up, and the people don't know about you know the budget, the treasurer and controller are technical kinds of positions. But we don't report to the governor. We don't report to the legislature. We're voted in by the people, and we report to the people. So the major plank is let the people know what is happening in terms of schools and prisons, and what is happening in terms of where the money's coming from and where the money's going to. So that's what I would say about planks and social media. Um, I, I totally agree with all that. Um, but the movement I'm waiting for, is this is what I think is gonna happen and what will wake people up and how we'll actually be able to take our next step is when we have a bail-in. When J.P. Morgan goes down or Bank of America, which has a trillion dollars in deposits and over $70 trillion in derivatives, and the derivative under the Bankruptcy Reform Act of 2005, the derivatives go first. So they will take our deposits. When people open up their bank accounts, they open up their computer and they say, see that their bank account is zero or says substantially less than they thought was in there, then they will suddenly take an interest in what banking is all about and where our money comes from. And so I hope to have planted the seed so that people will think, hmm, what about that? You know, we don't have to be beholden to Wall Street. We could set up our own banks. We could be independent. We could be sovereign from Wall Street. So, so that's what I hope to achieve, even if not getting elected. I hope to plant the seed so that people know there's an alternative. So when we need the alternative, it's out there, ready to be grabbed. I'll save mine for my wrap up. So, Rich, you're next. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I wanted to, I could, this, this question or, or comment can actually be directed towards anyone. But specifically, I believe that maybe Ellen or Laura probably would know more about, about this issue. And I'm with the American Postal Workers Union, and our, our, uh, our, our national president, Mike Diamondstein, has on more than one occasion that has mentioned that uh, he's very interested in, in the formation of a you know, of a public you know bank for the you know for the actual postal service and uh, I was wondering if, if if any of you either know that perhaps would would uh, have 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 been in in, in contact with uh, 
Yeah, in fact, Susan's working, um, Susan Harmon's working directly on that, so you can probably well, report with the study. So, Ellen and I both come out of the Public Banking Institute, which has shifted to the to Bank Act, a new organization, and we're working closely with both Diamondstein and the, um, who's the major other, with, with all four unions, basically. Um, four unions. Yes, trying, you know, we're the ones who got resolutions passed two years ago at all of the, all the postal union conferences, and we've been working with the union since then. And Are they all cooperative? I mean, all yes, the they're, yes, the they're united on this. So there, there's a real possibility of postal banks in the very near future. Okay. Great. And then I think Greg. Thank you. Um, I was actually going to ask this question along the lines of the other Greg. Apparently the Gregs think alike, so I won't go there. Um, but I do want to ask a question uh, very briefly um, to you two. Um, is the Green Party or do you have a position on things like a California version of a financial transaction tax that is being proposed, and also about minimum income concepts. I do favor both. The trans financial transaction tax would be a great way to ban to do all those things you need, and we tax everything else. There's no reason. Well, there are some reasons, but anyway, we should be taxing financial trades, particularly, you could tax everything over a million dollars, let's say. So you're not going to hurt the little investors. Who you're going to hurt or who you want to stop are the high-frequency program traders. And those are the people that are literally, I mean, that should be illegal, but it's not. They're actually creaming profits off the top of everyone else's profits, front-running trades. So capture those trades, and you would generate a huge amount of money for the state. And so is, that, is that viable on a well, California level? Yeah, um, can it, can it be done within the state of California? Um, that is a good so. okay. question. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't have statewide uh, stock yeah. okay. brokers, but, so I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But there are. And, the, uh, and this is where I would, again, make a, a pitch, given the way that these, you know, we need oil severance tax. We need a, a transaction tax for financial transactions that happen within the state. We need a fair income tax. We need to stop doing parcel taxes, treating every single piece of property the same. We need to charge them the same amount of money, no matter how huge or small. We need to um, get the corporate loopholes out of the pot. All of those things. And so the pitch is, we got to replace them. We actually have to replace them. You can only successfully lobby the people who are in Sacramento if you are a corporate person, because you are paying for them. But when you are a person, we have votes, and we need to replace them. Because the way the structure, which I was explaining before, the way that it's set up is you need two-thirds majority to get a transaction tax, to get an oil severance tax, to get some kind of a, like a reverse income tax where you give people a minimum amount of money and things like that. Replace, replace, replace. So we've come to the end of our stack. So, um, Sanders, so um, we have no more time for questions. We're going to have a wrap up, five minutes, from each candidate to say whatever they want to say. And I just want to say that we have um, $15 for each of them, but only 10 for David because he's not out of money yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no debt. So that's what we brought in today. I also want to say that in the voter's guide, there is a form in here you can fill out, you can send in. Um, I don't care what county you're from. You can, um, you can, it will go to Alameda County and then I'll help Greg sort it out. Please, please for those who travel further, I'm, I'm good. You're so, good. Yeah, I'll okay. donate my side of that campaign. Yeah. Okay, it's oh, boy, I have one more test. bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give it to those three. three. They, they travel the first. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not to make a, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good. Give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody who donated. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Boy, yeah. Boy. yeah, thank you all for coming and donating. Comment on uh, yeah, comment on. Oh, 
That's okay. Well, it'll come back, Denise. We're going to start with very quick. It's what Barry said about global about climate change terminology. That's what I want to say. We need to use the right terminology. Climate change does not do it. Global warming does do it. Because climate change is changing all the time. So use global warming instead of climate change. Thank you. Thank you. So, we want to alternate here rather than whatever. Go ahead. Maybe start at that. All right. Start with Ellen. Five minutes. Laura, okay. um, so replace, <laughs> you know, so the thing is that it's each one, each one reach 10, you know, reach, make a list, literally make a list of 10 people that you can say, are you pleased voting on June 3rd? And if you don't want to vote, you can sort of do both. Don't vote in any race where there are only corporate finance candidates. Do vote in any race that, has, that have no corporate money candidates. Greens and Peace and Freedom are always safe, occasionally Democrats. And the thing about having, um, one thing that I want to point out about Richmond, California, and how huge the changes have been there, is that sometimes people will say, Richmond got a majority of these no corporate money candidates. No, they didn't. They never had a majority. They had as many as three out of uh, seven or eight, but they never had a majority. We need people at the table. We need, and what happened was that they ended up getting majority for their position because they shamed those Chevron Democrats that were on the council that needs to be brought up in like all of these um, offices. Uh, I know for sure the money positions sit on like 40 boards. And what comes up when you're on that board? Public banking. What about this tax? What about that tax? What about this upside down tax rate where the lowest 20% is paying a higher tax rate? So the, the thing is that there are solutions. And we have them in our platforms, in our plank. We have them in our heads. We have them in our young people. There are plenty of solutions. And there's the money to pay for them. But what needs to happen is that the people who are not on our side need to be out, and people need to run for office at all levels, not just uh, local, definitely local and definitely statewide. We need to run it, and federal. We need to run at all levels. That's what's ha what has happened, and that's what has worked. And so the main, main, main thing I want to say is about corporate money. There's a line. If they take corporate money, there's a line that they're towing. And if they're, and you, you can see that in Sacramento, we should have, all of this stuff should have been taken care of in the past couple of years. If the Democratic Republican Party was going to do it, they would have done it. Every four years, no matter who gets elected, it's worse. But please, use your face-to-face -face time. If you would, literally, write down 10 people and just reach them, email or call or tweet or you know whatever, but hear back from them and say, will you vote on June 3rd? Every vote means so much. That it, we're, we're hoping, eight years ago, 33% voter turnout. No, four years ago, 33% voter turnout. Two years ago, 30% voter turnout. Let's make that a higher one because what the people that have not been voting are the people who know what's going on and have the solutions, and that's what we need. So, thank you. Thank you. Laura Wells. Laura. Um, Jerry Brown has boasted having balanced the budget, but he balanced it on the backs of the poor by slashing services, laying off public employees, raising uh, sales taxes, which hurt the poor more than the rich, because they pay a larger percentage of their income for consumer goods. The only way we're going to be able to have those services that we expect of government, we're probably not going to be able to squeeze it out of the rich. What we need to do is actually expand the size of the pie, rather than taking from the poor, or, you know, 
spreading around what, what limited resources we've got. We've got to expand the pie itself. And we can do that by generating credit ourselves, which we can do with our own state-owned bank. Um, basically, <coughs> we need to get it away from Wall Street. Wall Street is this gigantic parasite that is sucking <coughs> revenues out of our state. We can do that ourselves. The, the way banking works, most people think that banks I mean, I've actually heard two, one treasurer and one treasurer is, well, the California, like somebody at the treasurer's office here when I called up, said, well, we don't have the money to, you know, to lend. We need our money, our revenues for our, for our budget. But that's not the way banking works. The way banking works is you start with some capital, you get some deposits in your bank, the deposits are still there. You never go to the bank and they say, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait for 30 years to get your money out because they just lent it to your neighbor. They've always got your money when, you're the, when you ask for it because what they lend is not your, the deposits. They lend bank credit created on top of the deposits. The Bank of England just admitted that in March. They, apparently because there was a lot of pressure from the money reformers that have been working on this for decades. But and So the Bank of England came out with this um, annual report that said, or quarterly report that said, Contrary to popular belief, banks do not lend the depositors <laughs> money. They actually create the money they lend on their books. They create it as credit. So if somebody is going to be creating credit on their books, it should be us. It should, we should own the bank. If we're going to pay for the, the losses, we should get the profits. And we could do that, allow the government to actually make some money by going into the business of creating the credit that we need for our own local communities, and we could we could actually expand, we could be the golden state of the world where we could have the revenues that we need without necessary, without squeezing some group, we could we could generate that credit ourselves based on our, on our own revenues and our own deposits. Thank you.